Hi, Dr. Desmond Wright, gastroenterologist. If you have a loved one that has dementia, that you are definitely feeding the person, this video may be helpful. So when we feel like eating, like you and me, when we are hungry, we go for food, we swallow, but actually putting food in the mouth, swallowing, that the food drop in the stomach, and digestion is actually a very complex process. So in a person that has dementia, this process may be affected. So if you have a demented uh, family member, you try to, when you try to feed them, they will have certain reaction. If you eat, that's okay. Eating by mouth is always the best. But if you, have, you notice that they choke, they cough when they're eating, or they refuse to eat, and they have significant weight loss, say more than two kilo drop of weight in a week, then maybe it's time to seek help. Uh, under current guidelines, we always recommend that in a demented person, uh, hand feeding is always the best. You need to have a caretaker, either your helper or your family member or the spouse sat down with the patient in a comfortable area, a good environment and start to feed them spoon by spoon. Such feeding may take a long time. If they don't choke and they're just eating slowly, you can try. Hand feeding is good because it is it has give the pleasure of eating, chewing, tasting, smelling the food. But there will become a time that such feeding may, may not be possible. In a person that has acute uh, severe dementia or have some acute illness, they may even refuse to eat. If they refuse to eat, you force feeding them, you may cause them to choke. That means the food goes to the lung, cause lung infection and cough. So when you feed them by hand, look out for any cough and any choking sensation. If they are choking, they are coughing, then maybe it's time to think about the alternative. There are two basic ways to feed them if they have severe dementia. One, we call it the nasal gastric tube, NG tube. You put a little tube from the nose to the back of the mouth, absorb it to the stomach. We feed them milk, special nutrition milk. They have usually soy base to feed through this tube. This nasal gastric tube is easy to insert. A nurse can insert, a doctor can insert, a home a visiting nurse can also uh, insert. But the tube causes some problem. It's very small, it can choke very easily. If you have medication to serve, you need to pump the medicine through this small tube and give it to the small tube, it will choke up even more easily. And this tube goes through the back of the nose. It causes a lot of discomfort. It blocks some of the sinuses opening, it can cause sinusitis. It rests on the esophagus. It may increase the risk of esophageal in, uh, inflammation and damage and narrowing. Another way to feed them is what we call a percutaneous gastrostomy uh, and a tube PEG. We put a tube from the stomach into the stomach, out from the skin, through the abdominal wall into the stomach and feed them through this PEG tube. We bypass the upper part, the tube is much bigger, we can fit through the tube into the stomach, but that requires a small operation to do a scope to insert the PEG tube, percutaneous endoscopic gastroscopy. So after the PEG tube, we can last for 6 months to 12 months, and we can change it every six to 12 months. We, the PG tube is a much bigger tube to feed, more easily fed. Um, you can pump the medication key through the tube. It is much less likely to, to, to be choked. But because putting it requires a small procedure like a scope, there are certain risks involved. So how to come to a conclusion? Conclusion is by all means, try to hand feed the patient as much as possible. There's a pleasure of chewing, smell and taste. If they really cannot swallow by themselves, then choose tube feeding or gastrostomy tube feeding. How to choose between the two? One of them is a lower short-term risk, but very inconvenient to change every month. The other one have a little bit higher short-term risk, but more convenient after successfully placed. This is a difficult decision often. Talk to your doctor, talk to the family doctor, talk to your physician, talk to the gastroenterologist. By and large, you will think the patient is not going to survive very long. If they have other problems like a heart problem, a lung problem, etc., then maybe no point doing a small operation to put in the feeding tube. Maybe rely on nasal gastric tube, it's okay. But if the patient is well, you think they are likely to live beyond six months, then the nutrition should become important and maybe PEG tube insertion is a better choice. I don't have a solution for you, but do understand the process and talk to your doctor. I hope it helps you. Dr. Desmond Lai.